good uh, good day. I'm uh, or good evening. I'm Jeremy Dyson, uh, writer and uh, occasional filmmaker, and um, I'm going to choose my questions. What's the worst part of your job? Well, that's a good question. Uh, reviews. I would have to say that's the only bit I don't like. Is if you whenever you do anything, um, you know, in whatever capacity you have to have the brick wall of the reviews that you've got to just kind of push your way through and um, it's like waiting for your school report so, and it shouldn't be and you shouldn't care and in fact some disciplined creatives I know have worked, have got that discipline of not looking at any reviews um, but I myself am not that disciplined or haven't learned how to be and so yeah it's the only bit I don't like Everything else I enjoy. Question number two. Can you share a fact or a secret about you that nobody else knows? <laughs> In this company, one has to speak carefully. Um, what's a good secret about me that nobody knows? You see, I could say that I still occasionally suck my thumb, but I don't think that's a secret. <laughs> that's, well, certainly not within my, amongst family and friends, it's not. Um, what would be a good secret? I okay, so I used to have a um, Shiver and Shake annual. Uh, Shiver and Shake was a comic when I was a boy that, that was kind of spooky themed, and the, the weekly comic was fun, and you know it kind of uh, it didn't have anything scary in it. It was it was funny scary, but the annual had a real scary story with like a cowled ghost in it. Excuse me, that was my phone. And um, I was so scared of that book, just the drawing of the cowled figure, that I had to put that book on the landing or I couldn't get to sleep. So I had to take it out of the bedroom and um, put it on the landing. And then it would get put back in the bedroom and then I would put it back out on the landing again. Um, what was your first paid job? Ah, oh, right. Okay, so I was, um, from 12 years old, I was a children's entertainer and I started doing, I did my younger sister's party, did a magic show for her, uh, which I didn't get paid for. And then one of her friends asked if I would uh, do her party as well. And I did get paid for that. And from then, then on in, from being about 12, right through into my 20s, most weekends I was doing, I did a children's party. Did the did a magic show and uh, would sometimes and do the games as well. So I was quite I quite minted through my teenage years. Although I just blew it all on records, so I still have an enormous vinyl record collection as a consequence of that. Who would make up your ideal dinner party guests if you could have anyone living or dead? Well, it should say how many, because otherwise you could just keep going, couldn't you? It'd be a massive party. Um, let's let's say should we say three. Living or dead, okay. Um, well, dead is easier, isn't it? So we'll we'll skirt over the obvious ones: Jesus, Shakespeare, John Lennon, what have you. And let's go for you'd want someone with good stories, wouldn't you? So Orson Welles would have the best anecdotes for sure. You'd want someone who'd who'd perhaps led a really interesting life. Uh, and done amazing, unexpected things. So I would go for um, Bond director Guy Hamilton, because I think he was uh, a genuine war hero, one of those, um, you know, those, those amazing figures. And actually on the same, for the stories, the kind of British equivalent of Orson Welles' American stories, I would go for Val Guest, British director, because he would, I've read his, I read his book, um, and uh, it had the best anecdotes in so that's just off the top of my head without too much thought. All right, last one, question number five. Who, what has been your most interesting fan encounter? Okay, so Ghost Stories, the play, uh, there was on in Moscow. There was a Moscow uh, run of it in 2012 and me and Andy went over. Me and Andy Nyman, my co-writer, co-director, and... Um, there was there, we had a Russian fan base somehow which we couldn't understand or work out where it came from and I think it was a kind of a one remove via Sherlock 
I think because it was people who'd been fans of Sherlock, the TV show, and because of Mark Gatiss, that sort of meant there was a link via the League of Gentlemen to me, and I think that's what had led them to seeing Ghost Stories. Anyway, they had made the most intri- intricate gifts, um, and for me, they had made a, a snow globe, handmade, beautiful snow globe, with like a wooden base and, and a sculpture of me sat on giant versions of my of my own published books, um, like it, but in and then encased in a globe of glass, and it was it was quite large, uh, and it was quite an unbelievable thing. And then for for the other three members of the League of Gentlemen, they'd made handmade soaps, personalised soaps for each of them, uh, like with their names and with art buried within, and. Uh, yeah, it was extraordinary that you could go to, you know, another country like that. Oh, sorry, that's my phone again. And um, uh, yes, so that was my most extraordinary fan encounter. 